Shiju, who's online, and myself and uh, Mandana, who's going to kick things off. It's the right button to... Hello, everyone. My, myself is Vandana Salve. I'm from Micron, working on CXL software architecture. And uh, today, along with uh, Shiju and Jonathan, I'll start with an introduction with uh, the things that is to be covered in this session. Typically, the goal is to co uh, cover the RAS control features as such. So when we say the RAS control feature, what particularly it refers to this configuration control and the capabilities that is to be exposed to the management agent as such. And typically, your So here, in this case, we'll discuss what are, what are these RAS features and why they are to be in kernel and the different use cases. And uh, to summarize on the RAS control features that are to be covered as the petrol scrub, uh, error check um, scrubbing, memory sparing, and PPR functionality as such and the uh, control threshold as such. So particularly when we are uh, starting with the ECS, is ECS um, using the ECC error uh, correcting code allows the, uh, allows the DRAM to internally read and uh, uh, do the correction, single bit correction, and write back to the, uh, to the, uh, to the memory and providing the error counters as such. And basically the flow goes through it provides the configurations, allows the configurations with uh, various par parameters as ACS um, threshold, uh, thre threshold, the counters and reset counters, and the mode of operations as such. And it also, it provides the ACS logs so the host can uh, uh, collect the results of this ACS parameters and. Petrol scrubbing, basically, uh, uh, ECS handles the um, correctable errors, as a, whereas petrol scrub uh, mechanism also handles correctable as well as uncorrectable errors, and it provides uh, through the various configurations uh, through the host, such as um, <coughs> Uh, like uh, whether this petrol scrub is enabled or not, or what, uh, whether the how the um, petrol scrub cycle uh, ch can be changed or not. What uh, what should be the petrol scrub cycle um, uh, uh, cycle value and num uh, num uh, and what would be the num smallest number of the petrol scrub cycle as such. So those are the configurations that can be controlled by the petrol scrub as such. And uh, when the number of events exceed, when the number of errors exceeds a particular threshold value through the petrol scrub, it generates the uh, event record. Typically, the it has been passed through the DRAM event record or the media event record as such. And particularly the actions is like the discussion has will be continued later on uh, with Jonathan. Like what what uh, what uh, uh, appropriate actions can be taken from the admin side? Like the using the RAS Devon, the appropriate action would be to trigger the page offline on, on on those event records as such. And going back onto the. Uh, memory sparing and uh, PPR. PPR is basically the post package repair. It's a, for the repair operation whenever the error happens as such. And uh, it, it was a feature introduced in 3.0 um, specification as such. And basically, it works uh, of repairing uh, on a row, uh, uh, row, uh, a row sparing happens as such, whereas the uh, the more generic uh, definition is evolved in 3.1 for the memory sparing, where it provides a more um, modes of uh, uh, operation, like not limited to row sparing, but the cache line sparing, bank level, rank level, as such. And um, so, yeah, these are the ones. And then the uh, er error reporting can be done through the uh, various threshold counters, as such. So these are, and one more feature that I was at plan to talk, but due to limitation, was the memory reduction. That was the enhancements to 2.0 specification. Basically, it is like whenever the error occurs and if the system identifies that the memory can be taken offline altogether, instead of that through this memory degradation, um, uh, uh, it can report that the memory has been degraded, and accordingly, the uh, system firmware can update the size and report back so that the memory can still be used as such. 
Okay, so next I would hand over to Jonathan to continue on this discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we're going to move on to what we proposed as initially a separate subsystem, uh, but since then it's become enhancements to the existing EDAC uh, subsystem uh, to control all this stuff. And yeah, one of the opening questions is why do we do this in kernel at all? Uh, we could push it all to user space. Uh, we could just have mailbox commands for this. However, there are some of these features that are not safe. Uh, one particular one is PPR. So for PPR, there are devices that will implement it so that you can do it safely on memory that's in use. And there are devices where you can't. Um, if you attempt to do so, you get to pick up the pieces because the memory just disappeared underneath you briefly. Um, there are some devices where you have to create all traffic to the device while you're doing it. Hopefully, no one builds those ones, but we do need to support them. Um, the other aspect of this is if we push things down into the kernel, it does allow us an option to generalize. We're talking today about mainly the CXL um, features that support these things, but there are others. Uh, we actually, the very first time we proposed this, it was only with ACPI RAS2, which provides scrub interfaces. And the reason for that was that the CXL spec hadn't been published yet with the features, because this was pre-3.0. Um, so when we originally proposed this, this topic, uh, the patch set has been through quite a lot of versions. I think we're on version 12. We were having some challenges in getting reasonable feedback on it, whereas actually that, in the meantime, has been reasonably resolved. We've had a lot of good feedback uh, from some of the RAS maintainers and EDAC maintainers. Um, so things are actually ticking along reasonably well. So now I think the focus should be a little bit more on what are we missing, uh, what enhancements are needed, um, any questions people have about the topic. So, yeah, why EDAC? Well, it's kind of where the related stuff is. This is more a, a grouping topic as much as anything. It, it's bring everything together, enhance existing interfaces. Um, yeah, EDAC is, is unusual. It, it, it's quite, it's been around a while. Let's say it's mature. Um, as a result, it uses the Linux device model in a, a somewhat novel fashion. You, you only have, I think, two devices. Uh, you have one called MEM that covers all memory, and one called PCI that covers all PCI, um, under which you have a whole load of child directories with stuff in. Um, what we wanted to do while doing this was move to a much more conventional sort of, well, it's a bus as a class. So because EDAC's a bus, um, we're going to do it that way, but it could just as easily be a, a SysFS class. Um, and that means that we end up with separate devices. Uh, the strategy at the moment is to do uh, a device per kind of instance of the thing that is, we, we are controlling on. Now, for CXL, sometimes the feature makes sense to control at the level of an individual physical device. Sometimes it makes sense to control alongside the region. Um, so if we mounted it and we got DAX on top of it, et cetera, it may make sense to associate it with that. It may not. So some of these features you'll see in both places. So if we've got scrub control, for instance, the reason you do it on the device um, side is that actually you quite often want to know if you've got a problem before you turn the device on and start using it. So a classic thing to do is to scrub on the devices you're not using. Because then what you will see is if they've got a bit of a failure rate, uh, you'll get some idea of what it is. Um, and you may elect to not use that device. Um, however, you also want to scrub when, when live. So you want to associate it with a region, which might be across a whole load of interleaved devices. Um, so the idea here is that basically you get the whatever the uh, most frequent scrub anyone's requested is. Um, so yeah, you write to either the region one or the device one, and then we match whatever's requested, and you will report it back through the other interface. It's a little clunky because you've got two interfaces to the same thing, uh, but it at least means that both those use cases are covered. So, so if you scrub a device that's online under a region, that still works, it's just yep. going to happen underneath. Okay. Yep. All right. If you've requested a higher scrub rate for the region, we'll, we'll respect that. It, it, and I presume that you are going to have DPA reporting for one and HPA for the other kind of thing? Uh, the reporting is actually for this stuff is, is just going to be via the normal the, error reporting the, part. Okay. But, but like the control. Is, is it going to be address based scrubbing or is, or is this going to be scrub device? Like, no, or like for six at ranging? the moment, it's just scrub device. Okay. Um, there isn't, the spec I think doesn't allow for more detail. Actually, the ACPI RAS2 thing does, 
Um, so there we may have on-demand scrub of particular regions. You have some, you want some differentiated reliability. You've got some region with really important memory in it. Um, so we're going to use higher scrub rate on that and, and lower elsewhere. And when you say region, are you talking about the device partitions or no. re CHL regions? Yes. Okay. So this is, this is purely the region bit. You could move this all to user space. You could figure out where they are and control down to the underlying devices or not. Uh, here we are talking about a bus for uh, CXL stuff, but what about the normal memory? Are you also planning to have a separate bus for that, or oh, what are you thinking about? Yeah, no, this is all on the UDAP bus. You can see there that we have a third entry, which is ACPI RAS2, uh, and that's representing the normal memory, assuming it's using that particular ACPI interface. Um, we only have one vendor that we're aware is actually using that today. A number of others have evaluated it. Should we say that spec has problems? Uh, one of the absolute classics is it doesn't define the units. So you can control scrub, but you've no idea what the multiplier is. <laughs> so <laughs> um, that will hopefully get fixed, and we will update the code to support that. Um, but today, yeah, these, these little details that sneak through. Um, but it is, it is in use, and we have had, the, there were complexities around that to do with, it's supposed to be per NUMA node. Uh, the control, you're supposed to have a, you basically pick which NUMA node it is. Um, but there are people who've implemented the mailbox, so there is only one across the whole system. So you can end up trampling on each, on each instance, trampling on the other ones. So you have to be a little bit careful. So we've got a few quirks in there from what the spec actually says. Yeah, at least for me, splitting this per NUMA node or per memory controller actually yeah. would make sense. Yes. Because they may have differences and... Uh, or oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, in the intent here is to push the figuring out which memory you're actually controlling to sort of the next layer up. So we do that from REST even. So this is just exposing all of the information you need to figure that out. Um, in many cases, a CXL region is going to correspond to a NUMA node, but you can have multiple regions for reasons of how you set the thing up. Um, and you still want to be able to control them separately. So. Yeah, I mean, it's possible we'll end up with yet another layer on top of this, and we'll have a, a new node <coughs> one with yet another scrub. Um, yeah, we'll have to see how that works out. Okay. So we do have uh, a RAS daemon, so Shija wrote this, uh, proof of concept to do scrub control. We, we thought, well, okay, what's the algorithm here? Uh, well, we need a reason to increase how often we're scrubbing. Let, let's just use a threshold on number of corrected errors that are reported. So if you get a load of corrected errors, we crank the scrub rate up. Now, the idea here being that you'll fix the things earlier. You will, of course, end up with more corrected errors reported. Um, so it's a very, very simple algorithm. We only crank it up to the, this device is bad level, and then we leave it there. So there's no, no control theory going on here. There's no dynamic control at all. It's just a, it's looking bad. Scrub it more. Um, that obviously is garbage. There's no way anyone's going to ship that. But the point of this was just to show that the interface provides everything that's necessary to implement something sane. Um, if anyone does have suggestions on what such an algorithm would actually look like, uh, yeah, get, get in touch. We'd love to put something more realistic on there. Um, but until these devices are out there, we're kind of assuming clunky hack is the way to start uh, and come around later. This is my ignorance about how these things can actually get deployed in the wild, but like, I mean, RAS, RAS is, is the open source thing, but uh, do each like CSP environment have their own RAS policy thing? So like, th this would be a sample policy for those people to adopt? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, well, there's several things here. Where this was one of the two obvious use cases. The other one is the hot plug case, which is that you need something to squirt in an initial set of settings. And that one's much simpler, because that'll just be a hard-coded UDEV policy. Well, not hard-coded, it'll be per particular vendor or particular cloud or whatever, they'll have a policy for how often they scrub their memory. And you just program it into the devices, all is good. This one, yep, you're going to need some policy type controls on top of it. At the moment, it's just one value. Uh, maybe two, actually. I think there's a scrub rate and a threshold, which is obviously silly, but gets us going, gets, shows that the thing works. So, so you just said something confused me. The, do the devices periodically scrub on their own? Yeah. Or is, Okay, that this, this is all hardware scrubbing. So the, the devices are merrily doing this. Any sane device is going to scrub. Uh, by default, it will be on at the beginning. All we're typically doing here is tweaking the parameters of that. You can, in theory, turn it off. The only reason I know anyone ever does that is benchmarking. 
Okay. Uh, where what they're actually trying to do is they're trying to get rid of a source of noise. Okay. Well, that's just my ignorance of the hardware. So. Yep. So yeah, that's that side of things. Yeah. Um, yep. As I said, there are some issues. Uh, I think we already touched on those. Oh yeah, yeah. The the rest thing also allows multiple scrub ranges, so you can say, well, I want to scrub this range. Uh, at this rate and this range at a different <laughs> rate. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way of discovering how many there are or what the restrictions are. So it's just yeah, give it a go. <laughs> and that doesn't make for a nice software model. So one of those things I am interested in, which is obviously not so CXL related, is if people are interested in fixing RAS2, um, it's definitely a place for code first um, ACPI proposals. Uh, and it would be nice to tidy that up because while it is sad, it's not, not all memory is going to comply with the CXL spec for a while. I mean, maybe we'll get there and everyone will use our nicely defined control. <laughs> but it's not happening today. I mean, there are, there are efforts to try and generalize some of that stuff. So there's some stuff going on in OCP, I think, um, which may, may bear fruit, and people might eventually implement it on their host memory controllers. But probably not today. We do it for time. OK, so open questions. Now, I put these down purely on the basis we might get here and no one had asked anything. Um, but jump in with anything that you're interested in knowing more about. Um, I mean, the opening one's kind of obvious. Does what we've defined so far actually meet people's requirements? Are there things out there you can't control? Is the granularity wrong, information wrong, any of that stuff? If you haven't reviewed the patch set, you may find this a challenging question to ask. So the CXL standard, uh, uh, besides the host control mode for some uh, RAS functions such as uh, PPR and uh, memory spelling mm -hmm. has also the device initiated mode. Yes. Uh, where the device uh, autonomously has its own policy to perform, for example, uh, soft PPR. Yep. And uh, inform the host uh, through uh, an event uh, about uh, <coughs> the occurrence of these uh, actions. Uh, so, is there any initiative also to enable these uh, mode? Uh, in the kernel, or there are some uh, drawbacks? Yeah, so enabling that mode, my, well, I don't know, it's an interesting question. Are people going to ship devices with that on by default? Or is the expectation uh, that it's No, 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 it's uh, the software must enable, must discover the capability, okay. and then enable the capability on the device. I, so far, not something we've actually enabled, but it would be dead easy to add a flag for it. We already have, for Patrol Scrub, there's a, one of the specs includes a sort of background scrub always, um, which is kind of an, an enable bit that would be a bit similar to that. It's just a mode you switch into at which point, yeah, you, you get reporting, et cetera. We would need to wire the events up um, so that there was some interface. Maybe we just squirt them out as trace points and make it a RAS daemon problem to deal with it. Uh, much like we do with all the 6L events today, we just add those ones, I think. Has anyone added those? The PPR mem memory events sparing. Uh, would that say that PPR occurred? I think, no, I don't think, so. I think oh. they're in the normal DRAM event, which we do have, but I think the fields were added later. Yeah, so it may just be a spec okay. update. OK. Well, there's a job. So <laughs> someone take a note of that one. Uh, and and we'll just, that. Uh, just one uh, more mm -hmm. question, which is uh, uh, somehow related. So uh, still in the standard, uh, some of these operations can become a background commands. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, there, there is also <coughs> a command to request to abort uh, a yep. background command. Uh, not sure if this is uh, planned for the kernel to, to support. Uh. OK, so the reason we've talked about enabling the background command abort um, has primarily been for those commands where we want to expose them to user space. So it's things like component state dump. Uh, and the reason for that is that there's no defined maximum time. Uh, which is obviously problematic if the kernel needs to do something with the device. Um, for these, the only reason the kernel would probably abort them is going to be down to some timeout, um, which absolutely we, we, we could implement. And if people think we should have a timeout on things like PPR, I mean, I get to think quite what aborting an in flight PPR actually means. I suspect it would leave, leave you in a fairly odd state. Sorry, yeah. 
The device, uh, I think, has a, a timeout defined in the capability, so can be used also for uh, requesting to abort. Uh. So, so if we don't trust the device vendor, so put the correct timeout in there. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, okay. There'll be a bad one sometimes. So yeah, it makes sense to, to potentially use those okay. timeouts as a hint. Um, and maybe a, a bot if it takes twice as long. Um, I guess in theory we might have something that needs to be acted on very quickly by the kernel and then abort something like this that was in the way. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't today think why we'd do it. Um, but we do, yeah, the, the background command abort stuff is definitely coming for the uses like the firmware control. Uh, interfaces, so if, it's, okay. <laughs> if it goes on forever, we need to go, no, no bailout. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Here's one for, for Dan's favorite, NVDIM ARS. Do you, do you care if we add support for it? Or does anyone else care? I mean, I can, I can open it up to other lovers of PMEM devices of various types. Well, they don't love it, apparently. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So we'll just delete ARS, it's much nicer. So ARS is just the kind of on-demand scrub equivalent for persistent memory and an ACPI spec thing. Hmm. Yeah, I say we, we leave all that alone until... Yep. Until that, that. Somebody asked for it. Excellent. Not doing work is my favorite sort of work. <laughs> yeah. uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so one question that came up in review that I threw down here is this question of from the various drivers passing the interfaces as a, as a big attribute group and basically making it so that the drivers can add anything that makes sense for a given driver versus the callback type strategies. I got a couple of arguments for why one way or the other. Um, one is that EDAC is all callback. So for keeping with local style, um, yeah, it, it kind of makes sense to stay with callbacks. And the other one is, should we say everything that's ever gone the attributes route and has grown to any scale at all has given up and gone the other way? <laughs> Well, I don't mean, I, I, I like the object-oriented nature of like, hey, here, here are the core attributes, and here I'm, I'm going to include that set, and I'm going to add, add my own set. And so like, we, we, we do that in, in, in CXL. So um, I'll, I'll take a look. I mean, I, 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 like, I like that property of here are the attributes, and, and here's, my, here's my set of extra stuff, and not having mm. callbacks all over the place. But Yeah, it, it, it's fair enough. I mean, one of the reasons this also is if you're doing things like PPR, if you do it via attributes, you've got to have a dance where the driver has to do the sanity checks. Whereas if you've got it pushed into the core, all you've got, the, the core itself knows what the situation the memory has to be in in order to be able to safely do PPR. So it's things like that page has to be offline. We don't really want to do the offline check in every one of the drivers. I mean, we can. It's a perfectly good model. So at that point, we need to, that one needs to be callback based because we need to initialize the thing from somewhere else. Right. If it's a general attribute that has like a sub function that the yep. driver needs to do, that should be a callback. But if it's like a wholly owned like we don't we don't want to teach the edac layer okay. about this policy, but we just want to have some extra files show up, then that should be an attribute. That okay. The so when we add tags, that should definitely be an attribute. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're going to have tags here as well. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. Um, for now, I mean, my cynical attitude on this is adding attribute support generally means that people abuse it. Um, so I'm in, kind of inclined to hold off on doing it until we have a clear use case. I, I, I really think it, it really depends on which, what, function, what functionality you're trying to enable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that, that's fair enough. It's easy enough to, to combine a bit of both. Uh, yeah, do we need policy control in the kernel? So one of the things on these is you can shoot yourself on, in the foot. So one thing that people have talked about before is Things like uh, not allowing disabling of scrub. You can change the rates, the idea being that the thing won't go to an insane rate. Um, my personal view is no, but it has been asked. So anyone in favor of the kernel? It, basically, the ask was uh, along the lines of no sane manufacturer should allow anyone to uh, disable this stuff because you're just going to get horrible errors and lots of bug reports, and your field application engineers are going to go mad. Um, nope. Good. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the, if the user has root, they can do whatever they want to the, their machine. I, to be fair, my, so, my, my answer on this is slightly different, which is that a sane manufacturer is going to have hard limited these things. Sure. So, like so if the just hardware wants to allow the device. Because there's a reason that yeah. the hardware should protect itself. Yeah. But, you know, the user can go in and pull memory and 
Do whatever they want. They've got the hardware. Yeah, okay. Cool. Any other questions? I think we have no, zero minus one minute. So uh, if anyone can talk backwards. Um, anyway, I'm happy to take uh, continuing questions on these topics. And now it's coffee break. Um, I, w I will add that I, there are two gifts which will be handed to whichever speaker gets the most interesting discussion going. So I have my ideas on who that is today. Well, if I had known that, yeah. I could have stirred more. I didn't say controversial. Thank you.